Okay, I think this is going to be my last video for the first part of Python physics. So this is my series, uh, if you're just joining in, this is my series on uh, helping educators, mostly, uh, but also students to use Python in their physics courses. Um, so I'm going through uh, not the physics, but the Python stuff that we can do. And, and normally in your introductory courses, you'll have two semesters. You'll have the first semester will focus on uh, forces, momentum, kinematics, work energy, angular momentum. And then the second semester, you focused on electric fields, uh, magnetic fields, circuits, and stuff like that. So I'm going to move after this to the second semester. I'm still going to be making Python stuff. There's a lot of stuff to do. And then after that, I mean, you may be thinking, well, there's some really cool angular momentum stuff that I didn't do. Well, I'm going to, I have some like classical mechanics stuff I'll probably do too, but it gets more complicated. So this is, uh, I think, a pretty awesome calculation. Um, so I looked at the moment of inertia of a rod. Uh, and I, we, I calculated that. So go back and look at that. The whole playlist for this series is down below. So I'm going to point down below that way. Okay. Uh, but what if I want to find the moment of inertia of a spherical shell? So this is like a sphere, but it's not, it's hollow. Okay. So it's got some thickness. It doesn't really matter what that is. Uh, and all the mass is concentrated on the outer surface. It has a radius R. Now, number one, you can look up the moment of inertia of a sphere. It's too th a thin spherical shells, two-thirds mr squared. But what if you wanted to, to calculate that analytically? It's not, it's not super easy to do because you have to break this um, into a bunch of rings or something like that and find the moment of inertia of different rings. It's not impossible, okay? But it's not, it's not super easy either. Um, now, one quick point. These are, this is the moment of inertia of a sphere about a fixed axis. Okay, so we're not having a fixed point, we have a fixed axis. So I'm saying the axis of rotation is through the center of the sphere. Uh, and we can move that later, you can move it later if you want to, but that's what that's going to be. The, the real moment of inertia for a rigid object is more complicated. It would be the moment of inertia tensor. So this is just for uh, the moment of inertia about a fixed rotation axis. Now, if I, if I were able to break this into a bunch of points uh, on the sphere, and this is, should be in three dimensions, then I can find the moment of inertia for each individual point as the mass of that point times the distance from the axis of rotation squared. Uh, so if this is, let's say, this is going to be the, uh, this is the x direction, the y direction, and that's the, uh, an axis in the y direction, then this would actually be uh, r is going to be uh, r, the square root of r dot x rx squared plus rz squared, All right? Not the, it's not the total magnitude of the position that matters. Only the, the y component doesn't matter. Only the distance from the, y ax, from the y axis. That's important because in the past one, uh, what I did was to find the, uh, uh, at the moment of inertia of a rod, I used the, the magnitude of that vector r, and so I don't want to do that. Okay, so then how do I generate these points that are on the surface of a sphere? What if I want to make a thousand points and calculate the moment of inertia for these thousand points? It's kind of hard. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's not trivial to evenly distribute those. But there is a trick with Monte Carlo. So if you remember, Monte Carlo says, let's use some random numbers. Let's use random numbers uh, to, to to calculate what we want to do. If I make these randomly distributed, then they should be uniformly distributed too. Now, if you remember in Python, we have this function, random. This returns a number between 0 and 1. Okay, so how do I get uh, these in a sphere? What I'm going to do is first generate random numbers, random points in a cubicle box. And I'm going to do that because I know that I can distribute those uniformly. I can generate, uh, this goes from 0 to 1 and to negative 1. So my, I need to get an x coordinate between negative 1 and 1. So I can do that, say, rx is going to be equal to, um, let's call it, I'm just going to use r equals 1. So this is going to be uh, 1 minus 2 times random. Is that right? So this is, the biggest this could be would be a 1, 
and then that would be 1 minus 2 was negative 1. The smallest this could be is 0, so I have 1. So this gives me a number between negative 1 and 1. So then I can do that for Ry, I can do that for Rz, same thing. And then I can generate a point, and that's what I'm going to do first. Now what I'm going to do is to generate a whole bunch of points and only count them after that, only count them if they're in this region. So I'm going to find the magnitude of the point, the r value, and if it's between, let's say, uh, r is between, um, let's say, 1 and 0 0.9. I'm just picking up some values here. Then keep it. Otherwise, throw it away. And then what I'll be left with is just these points in the shell. Uh, maybe I should do 0.95 to 0 0.05 so it's evenly distributed about that. Okay, so let's jump over to Python. Number one is going to be to generate a thousand points in a cube. Number two is to cut away all the points we don't want. And remember, we have to do this because I want them uniformly distributed. If I try to make them just in a sphere, then they're not going to be uniformly distributed. I can't, there's a way to do it, but it's a little trickier. So let's jump over here to Python and make our thing. This is going to be, this is not just, this is not just physics. Okay, we are in the realm of art also. Okay, so let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is to say n equals, let's start, I like to start with something small, n equals 100. And uh, n equals zero. So I'm gonna use that as my counter to get up to the number of points I want. Um, I already know r is equal to one, so I'm not even gonna worry about that. Uh, so let's just say while n is less than n do the following. Uh, and I'm gonna do this n equals n plus one. I always forget that and then I run it and it gets in an infinite loop. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to generate a random vector. So let's call this rr for random vector. And it's gonna be a vector and it's going to have a x component of one minus two times random and its y component is gonna be the same thing and z component, same thing. Okay, so now that's my random number. Now I'm gonna make a sphere. So I'm not gonna label the sphere, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna give it a name, I'm just gonna give it a, uh, an object. So I'm just gonna say sphere, the position is rr, the radius is going to be equal to, I'm just trying to think here, let's say 0 0.1 and try and see what that looks like. Uh, and, and that's all, I'm not gonna leave the colors white, I'm just gonna make 100 random points and they should be in a cube. Let's just see what happens. There you go. It looks pretty good. I mean, it looks cube-ish. Let's make this a little bit smaller, 0, 1, and let's do a thousand. If I can do a hundred, I can do a thousand, right? There's no difference. So let's do this a thousand, and let's run that. Okay, there's my thousand points. They're a little small. Let's make these point three. Yeah, and see that is a cube. Right, that's a thousand points in a cube, and I could I could make that ten thousand just as easily as I did a thousand. Okay, I'll do ten thousand. Maybe that was a mistake. No, it wasn't a mistake. So you can see that they are they do look uniformly distributed. I didn't test for that, but they did look like that. Uh, let's save this. Uh, I for thin sphere shell. And yes, I am going to give you the code down below. Okay. So now what I want to do is to kind of cut away all the points I don't want. So let's let's make this uh, dr equals 0 0.05. And then, I'm, so I generate my random number right there. Now I'm going to say this. If magnitude of rr is greater than 1 minus dr, and mag rr is less than one plus dr, then that's one that I wanna keep. I wanna keep that one. So if that's the case, I'm going to make the sphere and increase the number. And let's just start this low, cause you never wanna do 10, you wanna never start off big and say, I'm going big 10,000. No, I'm gonna do 100. And so I'm only gonna add one to my, my point if it works, right? I'm not gonna keep counting up to a thousand. I'm just gonna count which ones are in that little shell. Uh, so let's just run it. That's only a hundred points. 
Okay, so th that does look okay, right? It does look like they're in a shell. You can actually zoom in through here too. Uh, so let's just ramp it up to 1,000. And there you go. There's my 1,000 points, and it does look spherically symmetric. And this is where we're getting into the art part of the of the lesson here. I mean, that's artistic. I love that. You could give them different colors and everything. Uh, you could zoom in through it. I mean, that's just, come on. I mean, with, with 10 lines of code and one of them is a blank line, I mean, I kind of, I'm kind of impressed myself. Okay, now what we can do, uh, we have a couple of options. I don't really care about where those, um, what those points look like. Uh, I just did that so I could see. So I need to kind of, I could just calculate the moment of inertia straight off, right? I could, as I make the point, add it to the total moment of inertia. But I think what I'm gonna do is to add these values to a, a list of Rs. Uh, so let's do the following. I want to use uh, i equals zero, right? I'm gonna add to that. I'm gonna start with i is equal to zero, and every time I make a point, I'm gonna calculate the moment of inertia of that point and add it to this. Uh, and then I need to make dm is gonna be equal to, oh, I need m. So let's say r equals one. I already said that, actually. Because uh, you could go down here, and I can actually change this to uh, r times that. I, I'm just gonna leave it as one. I shouldn't do that, I should make it R. Let's do it. R times, and then down here, this would be, it have to be, uh, this is gonna to be greater than R times. Now you can make it a different size sphere if you want. R times, okay, that's fine. I just feel a little bit better. Uh, so I have R, now I have DM is gonna be equal to the, I need the total mass. M equals, uh, the, if I have a one meter metal sphere, it's gonna have a mass of, that's huge. I'm gonna say seven kilograms. I just picked it, it doesn't really matter. So now dm is gonna be equal to m divided by n, right? n is the number of points I have. Each one of those points has uh, part of the total mass. So I have to add up the total masses to get that. Okay, so now the last thing I'm gonna do is call this RP equals a list. This is my list of points uh, that I'm going to create down here. So every time I have a value of R uh, that is legitimate, then I'm gonna add it to that list. So I already have R, R is my, my value. If it, I draw the sphere, I'm gonna keep drawing it. I'm gonna add it to my list, RP equals RP plus RR. All right, so now I'm adding vector values to that list. So this will be a list of vectors. And I'll show you what that looks like. Let's go down to, let's do 10. Uh, so I'm gonna run that. And then over here, I'm gonna say print uh, RP. So, oh, that's not what I want. So there's my list of 10 vector values of points on that sphere. Okay, that's not gonna really be great enough, but I just wanted to show you what that looks like. Let's change this back to a thousand. Okay, so now I have a list of a thousand points. And that's RP. So now I can calculate the moment of inertia. So let's do this for RT in RP. Actually, this is a, a cool trick. I can go back to 10. For RT in RP, this says every element in the list RP, I'm gonna call RT and it's gonna go through each one. So if I do that, I can print it. Let's just print rt.x, just the x component, just so you can see what it looks like. So there's my x components of all my, my values. I don't want to print it because I'm going to get super high numbers. But now I can deal with that. So I can say, I, I can let's say di is going to be equal to dm, right? This is my uh, mi ri squared. So it's dm is my mass times my distance from the y-axis, that's gonna be equal to the square root of rt dot x squared plus rt dot y squared. And I can't just use the total magnitude because the, the y value doesn't matter. So I'm essentially getting rid of that. Uh, and then I can take that and say i equals i plus di. And then that's it. So let's change this up to 1,000. Uh, let's go down here, and I'm going to print that out. I need the value. So let's say print i equals i, and the units are kilogram, uh, 
kilogram meter squared. And then let's calculate I. Theoretical IT is going to be equal to, what is it? That says two thirds, two thirds times M times R squared. Two thirds M R squared, which I have M and I have R. And let's print uh, I, IT equals IT kilogram meters squared. And let's run it. Okay, so I get uh, my numerical calculation of I is 5.5. The theoretical is 4.6. If I run it again, I should get a different value. So I get 5.5 again. Uh, let's do it one more time. Okay, 4.8. Let's bump this up to about 10,000 data points and see what happens. I'm off by a little bit. I'm so kind of surprised. See, so that's the y-axis. It's just giving me dm. I mean, the, the one thing that I think could be the case is that my thickness is too great. So let's change this. I can do this dr is 0 0.01, and let's see what happens. So that's just going to make my my tolerance for making these things much smaller. Huh. I'm still getting the wrong two-thirds m r squared. They're not agreeing. m r t x squared, r t y squared. Do you see what's wrong? Hmm. Then look at that sphere though. It looks really nice. Um, why is it not dm is m over n, m i r i squared? Aha! Found it. This is r. That's the distance. I didn't square it, so I need to get rid of the square root. And bam! See? Maybe I made that mistake on purpose. I don't know. Uh, so let's go back down to a thousand and see how close that is. Okay, yeah. So that's a pretty good number. Run it again. Uh, yeah, I'm getting I'm getting variations. So even with just a thousand data points, you get the right answer. My fault. Sorry about that. Uh, but but this shows you the power of this Monte Carlo calculation because if I can, the key is to generate the box right. The box of values is uniformly distributed, and then cut out everything that's not in the thin shell. So, and, and if you want, you can make it a thick shell. See, what's the, uh, if I want to have a thicker dr, I can do that easily. So let's say dr is equal to uh, 0.2. So if I, if I do that, it's, it's a thick shell, see? And I get a slightly different value. Uh, let's put this at 10,000. Oh, you can't even see that it's thick until you get inside. Uh, I could fix that by making my points smaller let's make this point one and you should be able to see that it is indeed that looks nice right there it looks kind of chopped off at the top i don't know i guess it's okay it's maybe just, just the way it looks okay i think it's okay um dr oh i know why oh i did make a mistake because right here i said r uh, plus dr. There's never going to be anything greater than dr, right? It can't be greater than uh, 1. So I actually did make a mistake. Uh, I should make this, if I make this r uh, times 1 plus dr, then uh, I'm, I'm increasing my range and I run this and it should look better. Yeah, okay. So I was I was saying if it's over r plus dr, but there is no over r plus dr because I only let it go up to one. And so now I have a much better uh, sphere. That's pretty nice. Art. That's art. Okay. Code down below. Playlist down below. Uh, electric field is next. So we're going to do probably electric field due to dipole or how do you display the electric field. Probably just due to a point charge uh, so we can practice making those electric field arrows. That's probably what I'll do next. So... That's that. Later.